Good morning. Good morning. Wow, I'm so glad to see you this morning. What a blessing to be with you, see you, fellowship with you, greet you in the name of the Lord, and to share the worship service together. Yes, indeed. Um, according to our bishop, the pastor may remove his mask when he's in the pulpit only. And that's that's that. So, uh, let's begin with our announcements today. Briefly, announcements this morning. As we said last uh, Sunday, I see our you know, our front door. I believe needs some attention. It's kind of blowing in the wind. <laughs> Uh, everybody, everybody else, including us, are blowing in the wind. <laughs> so it's good to leave that door open, and I hope we can, but we just need to kind of call it back where it'll, where it'll be secure. But uh, if you're like me, you kind of got blown around trying to get here this morning. Okay, now, back to the announcements. As we said last week, we are moving... Thursday night Bible study back to Wednesday night, which is the more appropriate time. Last week was the last time that Bible study will be on Thursday night. Next week, Bible study will be on Wednesday night. So make that note in your mind and be looking for Bible study on Wednesday night of this coming week. Also, we are grateful for a volunteer to be our congregational participant today, which is Miss Susan. Let me say that if you would be willing to be the congregational participant of the day, to do a reading, read a Bible passage, read a Bible verse, read a uh, some verses of a hymn, read a short devotional, say a prayer, whatever, your choice, call Patty. Just let Patty know, and we will be happy to put you on the schedule. And those, I believe, are the announcements of the day. So, therefore, we're going to begin our morning worship service with our prelude. Susan today 
she graciously volunteered to be our congregational participant and share with us in the morning service today. So at this time, Susan, if you would, and we thank you in advance. I'm not very good at speaking in front of a lot of people. I'm a tax preparer, so I'm kind of one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> but um, I wanted to share one of my favorite stories. It's the prodigal son. Y'all are very familiar with it. Uh, I was raised on it in the Lutheran church, and I know you've all heard it many, many times. But I'm going to tell you how it relates to me. Many years ago, when I was a child, I was raised in the Lutheran church. And my grandfather was very insistent that we go to church on Sundays. And on the Sundays we could not go, he would come to my window and we would have a church service mm -hmm. at my window. Well, I had a very bad experience when I was 13. My grandfather died. And I gave up on the church. And I gave up on God. And I spent many years wandering through life without God in my life. Well, then I had another experience when I was older. And Jim and I were riding on motorcycle, and we had a bad wreck. And when I came to, I was laying on the ground, and I looked up, and I could see the sun shining. And my first thought was, God, thank you for not killing me. And at that point, I started praying to him. Well, a few years later, my grandmother passed away. And my dad asked John to preach it from memorial. And I had never heard John preach. So I decided one Sunday I would come to church. And when I did, I met all of you. And it was just like a whole new family for me. So I feel like my life's journey has been like a prodigal son. I left, I was forgiven, and I came home. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for sharing that very personal and very inspiring testimony with us today. Thank you and God bless you and you and Jim are indeed family and uh, we are grateful for you. Thank you, Susan. Now friends, our opening hymn today is Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Thank you for the 
good and beautiful music this morning. All right. <clears throat> Following our opening hymn, I'm going to share with you the affirmation of faith for the day. Reading the Apostles' Creed from our United Methodist Kingdom. It's a privilege to share this affirmation of faith and this statement of classic Christian beliefs with you today. We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And if you affirm your belief in these basic Christian doctrines, please lift, lift your hand. Amen. And now I believe Miss Betsy is going to share with us uh, special music for
tired of you and Nancy providing special music. Thank you. But at this time, please join me in a word of prayer. Let us all bow our heads and all together enter into a spirit of prayer. Almighty God, eternal Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the blessing of being together. We give thanks for the miracle of the resurrection of Christ our Lord, the miracle of Easter. We give thanks for one another and the fellowship of the church. We give thanks for prayer and we give thanks for the opportunity to share prayer requests with you, our Heavenly Father. You have told us in your Holy Word that you know us completely. You know all about us. That you know when we rise up and when we sit down. That you know when we go and you know when we return. That you know when we are happy and you know when we are sad. You know everything about us. You know us better than we know ourselves. You have created us and know us. Your Holy Word says that you know even the thoughts of our mind. So we pray in complete confidence and trust unto you knowing that you know us and that you know our needs. You know the situation in which we live. You know the longings of our heart and mind. And you know the prayer requests that we share together this morning by uplifted hands. We pray, O oh God, that you might bless our church and anoint our worship service this morning. We know that your sweet, sweet spirit is here, just as the song says. We look into you this day and we look into you every day for the needs of our lives. And you provide strength sufficient, grace sufficient, guidance sufficient. Your all sufficiency is our security. We seek to live with you and by your holy word each day, day by day. This we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose name we honor today. Amen. It's a privilege to share with you a brief word today. I want to speak this morning on the subject of the story of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus. I thought that would be an appropriate topic today since last Sunday was Easter and we are currently still in the Easter season thinking of thinking of resurrection and new life that story of the raising of Lazarus would be an appropriate topic to preach on today. 
Uh, if you want to read the entire story of Lazarus, it is contained in the Gospel of John, chapters 10 and 11. So I hope that you will take out your Bible this afternoon or next week and read the entire story of Lazarus. I want to read a portion of that story of the raising of Lazarus today in our service, in our worship service. So, in the Gospel of John chapter 7, the story of the raising of Lazarus. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister said to Jesus, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. In Jesus' day and in Bible's day, a way to show respect for person for a person was by not calling them a name. It's the opposite in our culture today. In our culture, a way to show respect for a person is to call their name. But in the culture of Jesus' day, just the reverse. A way to show respect for someone was, was by not calling them a name. So look at how the Bible refers to Lazarus. His sisters sent him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Isn't that a wonderful way to refer to Lazarus? He whom you love. When Jesus heard it, he said, The illness is not unto death, for it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by means of it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go into Judea again. <clears throat> The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were now out seeking to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Thus he spoke, and then he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I go to wake him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but the disciples thought he meant that Lazarus was asleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also. Now when Jesus came, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, while Mary stayed at the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. 
and whoever lives and believes shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is coming into the world. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Again, the story of Lazarus. The Bible says that Jesus was in the city of Jerusalem. He left, crossed the Jordan River, and went into the wilderness of Judea. Jesus received word that Lazarus had died, and Jesus returned to Jerusalem and raised Lazarus and declared I am the resurrection and the life. That is about the simplest and briefest summary or outline of the story of raising Lazarus that we could possibly have. But if you would please permit me to elaborate a bit on this wonderful story. Again, it is from the Gospel of John, chapters 10 and 11. The Bible says that Jesus was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Dedication. The Hebrew word for dedication is the Hebrew word Hanukkah. Jesus had come to Jerusalem to celebrate Hanukkah. Hanukkah was a celebration of the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem. The festival of dedication occurred <coughs> on the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kislev. In other words, it occurred during the winter. The festival of dedication was a winter celebration. And Jesus had gone to Jerusalem for fun. Whenever Jesus went to Jerusalem, he always stayed in the home of his dear friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, who lived in the village of Bethany. Bethany was a little village about two miles uh, northeast of Jerusalem. We would refer to it as suburban Jerusalem. And that's where Jesus stayed whenever he visited Jerusalem. The Bible says the festival of dedication took place, finished, and was over. And Jesus and the disciples left Jerusalem to return back home to Galilee, where they lived. The Bible says that Jesus left the city of Jerusalem, crossed over the Jordan River, went out into the Judean wilderness and it was at that point that Jesus received word that his friend Lazarus had died. Jesus received word of the death of Lazarus two days after Lazarus had died. The Bible says that Jesus 
chose to remain where he was in the Judean wilderness for two more days. And then the Lord Jesus returned to Jerusalem or more properly <coughs> returned to Bethany. Jesus' return would have involved approximately a one day walk. Jesus crossed the Jordan River again from east to west, walked up the Jericho Road, walked up the Mount of Olives, and from there to Bethany. The Bible says that when Martha heard that Jesus was returning, coming back, that Martha went out to meet. Mary stayed at home, but Martha went out to meet Jesus. On the top of the Mount of Olives, there is a crossroads, an intersection. At that crossroads, on the top of the Mount of Olives, if you turn right, you go down to Bethany. If you go straight, you go down to Jerusalem. It was probably at that crossroads where Martha met Jesus on his return. That would have been a natural place to wait for Jesus and to meet him as he returned. You know, friends, life itself is sometimes a crossroads. <clears throat> as we travel down the road of life, we sometimes come to a crossroads, an intersection of two roads. One road goes this way, one road goes that way. So, what are we going to do? Which way are we going to go? Which road are we going to take? The American poet Robert Frost wrote a poem entitled The Road Not Taken. And in that poem he writes these words. He said, Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. I took the road less traveled. And that made all the difference. Jesus said, in life, there are two roads. Jesus said one road is narrow and rough, and the traveling is difficult. But that road leads to life. Jesus said the other road is wide and broad and smooth and the traveling is easy. But that road leads to destruction. So we as Christians are always reminded to keep on the straight and narrow road of which Jesus spoke and travel that road as we
as we journey through life. And to always choose Jesus. And in the words of Robert Frost, that will make all the difference mm -hmm. in our lives. And going back to the story of Lazarus. The Bible says that Jesus arrived four days after the death of Lazarus. In other words, Jesus arrived on the fourth day of a seven day funeral. The Bible says that many people from Jerusalem and the area had come to the home in order to comfort and console and express sympathy and love and support for Mary and Martha in the death of their brother. That was a wonderful and kind and compassionate thing to do. That people would come to their home and soul and comfort Mary and Martha. So Jesus arrived there was gathered a large crowd of people gathered all about the house and the grave. And then the Bible says that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. That Jesus performed a miracle and raised Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus declared I am the resurrection and the life. No greater words were ever spoken in the Bible than those. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. No greater words than those were ever spoken in any book in the history of the world than those words. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, I am your life on earth and I am your resurrected life in heaven. Nothing greater than that. I am the resurrection and the life. As a side note, people often ask, will we know each other in heaven? And I think the resounding answer to that question is, yes. Yes, we will know each other in heaven. Jesus said, will rise. Now when Jesus said that, Lazarus was already on the other side of the grave. Jesus was saying to Martha, your brother was your brother on the earthly side of of the grave and your brother will be your brother on the heavenly side of the grave. Lazarus was your brother on the earthly side of the grave. Lazarus will be your brother on the heavenly side of the grave. The risen Lord Jesus Christ called Mary Magdalene by name. When 
Jesus did that, Jesus himself was on the other side of the grave. So I think what the Lord was saying was that Mary is Mary on the earthly side of the grave and Mary will be Mary on the heavenly side of the grave. You know, we are us on the earthly side of the grave and we will be us on the heavenly side of the grave. So the question, will we know each other in heaven? Of course. Of course we will. Of course we will. We will still be us in heaven as we were us on earth. Well, I think the point of the story of Lazarus <coughs> is simply the words of the Lord Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. The message that in Christ, death is not the end, not the end of hope, not the end of life, but that in Christ we have life both on earth and we have life in eternity in heaven. That's the good news of Easter. That's the good news of the resurrection of Jesus. That's the good news of the raising of Lazarus. That's the good news of those immortal words that Jesus spoke. I am the resurrection and the life. Let us pray. We give thanks, O Lord, for your miracle of resurrection, your miracle of Easter, and the hope and promise it gives to all of us of our resurrection someday. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning is is morning as well.
Methodist people and Holston Congress churches to not linger in the building after the worship service is over. So following our benediction, we will have our dismissal as we did last Sunday. We will begin with the very back rows, and then after the back row, the next row forward, and then after that row, the next row forward, and then on and on, uh, coming this direction. So may we stand for our benediction. Now may the grace, mercy, peace, love, and fellowship of God Almighty be with and abide with each of us, both now and forever. And you are listening. Good. Susan, you did a great job. You did. Hey, Jim, how are you, buddy? I'm not allowed to do that, am I? I'll pat you, pat you on your shoulder. Hi, Casey. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Hi Marsha. Hi, Hi Getting some video of people coming in now. I asked Norma, she said, Yeah, she would help do one of those pictures. Great. Right. Uh, I've got the thing in here. You want it? What? The what? The uh, photo album. No, I'll, I'll look at it. Wave at them, don't. <laughs>